Hey everyone and welcome to another video. Today I want to talk about why I think Nintendo makes the best first party exclusives in the industry. Nintendo has the same problem that Sony does with replayability, but I will not sit here and lie and say that Nintendo does not force you to sit down and watch a movie unlike Sony or Microsoft. For example, if somebody sat down and said Quantum Break was one of their favorite exclusives on the Xbox One, I'm pretty sure most people would be surprised. But this is more so a follow up to the PlayStation video I did a few months back. The main reason I want to talk about Nintendo and give them praise is due to the simple fact they are one of the few game companies that I consider that are still making games that are for gamers. Don't get me wrong, Nintendo still has very anti-consumer policies and practices which most people will admit is scummy. I think the main reason Nintendo continues to stay at the top of the gaming industry is primarily because of how many fans that it's remained to keep and garner over the years. The best example of this would be Naughty Dog in their experimental game with The Last of Us Part 2 and the Coalition's attempt to continue the Gears of War series or even 343 with Halo. Nintendo does continue to try new things. The best example of this would be Breath of the Wild and Fire Emblem Three Houses, both games that have sold exceptionally well, even compared to most PS4 exclusives, considering something like God of War or Detroit Become Human. Nintendo isn't afraid to leave most of their old ideas behind. This can best be seen with the Mario series. Mario has gone through so many different variations throughout the years, but Almost everybody can identify the vanilla Mario side-scrolling playstyle, and yet we still get stuff like Mario Odyssey, Mario Galaxy, and Super Mario Sunshine, all three games that are entirely different from each other that sell exceptionally well. Nintendo doesn't like to sit on one thing and keep that one thing going for as long as they possibly can without trying something new. Hence why most people were surprised that Breath of the Wild even got a sequel. Yes, there's stuff that's always teased in these Nintendo games, but let's take Metroid Dread that was originally revealed or teased in Metroid Prime 3 way back in 2007. Nintendo is also one of the few game developers in the industry currently that doesn't have a primary age demographic. Nintendo games are geared at almost everyone. Even when they did do Twilight Princess that was aimed to have more of a gritty art style, it was still accessible for young adolescents and older adults that are still into the series. Nintendo excels in accessibility, while Sony and Microsoft fail in that department. The best example of this that I can use with Xbox would be Gears of War. Gears of War was originally seen as the most gruesome Xbox game because of blood splattering on the screen, but most of that stuff, at least in 2021, isn't seen as cool anymore, especially considering that Gears of War 1 released way back in 2006. Nintendo also develops a lot of their games in-house, meaning that most of their games are supervised by big names in the industry. And a lot of people like to give Sakurai flack for certain DLC characters in Super Smash Bros, primarily by Lith from Three Houses, but anybody with common business sense would be insane to think that the first fighter pass would literally be third parties only in a first party Nintendo game. Stuff like that is stuff that a lot of people seem to overlook when analyzing Nintendo. A lot of people seem to forget that Nintendo is a business. It'd be insane to think that the first fighter pass would literally have no first party characters. It's a business healthy decision to advertise their most recent first party game. And as many people do like to hate Sakurai for adding certain me costumes like Geno and Dante, at least they acknowledged it. A lot of game developers would sit here and lead you on for ages saying that a character was hinted at or leaked or found in the source code without saying anything official about it. And Nintendo does at least care about its fans somewhat. They do have a seal of quality without pushing out straight shit, unlike EA or Bethesda. The thing about Nintendo is that they would continue to get all of this praise 24-7 if they weren't so anti-consumer. Compared to Microsoft and Sony, 
Nintendo is basically Satan. I remember back in 2013 to like 2017, they made you sign a partnership so you can actually use gameplay from their games in your video without it immediately getting struck down. And they still do some of this stuff today, even if you post a few clips or use their characters in a way that they don't seem healthy or pure. That's something that most people hate Nintendo for today. They don't like competitive play either. This can be seen with the melee scene and how we still have free melee going on consistently. And the thing is, Nintendo would get more pushback if more people were openly vocal about it. But Nintendo has so many brain dead fanboys that will continue to defend them regardless of what happened circumstance wise. It's something that I think most people don't like Nintendo for today is the fact that Nintendo, yes, they make good games, but the way that they treat their customers isn't always the best. And that goes into remakes as well. The remakes prices are still $60 for games that you can probably find in a bargain bin for like 20. Nintendo openly does not like playing fair when it comes to certain things. It also doesn't help the fact that so many gamers today play double standards. Look at how fast people are willing to call out Ubisoft or Bethesda when they fuck up, but Nintendo is basically clean whenever they make a mishap and give everyone goodwill. This can best be seen with the free melee stuff that happened three days before Seth Roth was revealed, and as soon as Seth Roth was revealed, everybody just kinda instantly forgot. It's stuff like that that gives Nintendo the right to keep doing what they do. Unlike Sony, Sony developers like Naughty Dog or Santa Monica will be praised or hated for when they make fuck-ups, but Nintendo can sit here and release something like the Skyward Sword remake or the Mario trilogy at $60 and still basically be seen as saints to most people that are big fans. I'm basically surprised that Nintendo is doing as well as they are, even with their mobile games.